You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. Introspective welcome to all of you today. And I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, along with iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes, and ever more places where you can find us, which is just great because here's where you get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical and emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. Here's a bold question to begin with. Have you ever been aware of a still small voice within striving to connect with you? If so, did you heed it? What happened? If you ignored it, what happened? If you have not so far become aware of this voice, would you like to learn more about how to tap into your intuition today? Because no matter how you responded, we can encompass all of those answers and more within this show. After a very potent, as in intense almost, show last week, I might like to enter June on a gentler but equally powerful note in its own way. As with many of my guests this year, I began my outreach as a result of receiving her valuable newsletter for a bunch of years, and I guess that proves for entrepreneurs the benefits of putting out your offerings on a consistent basis, because you never know when a media personality like a radio show host named Carol Ann will will contact you, and I have to laugh over my own title, because especially those who know me realize that I do not consider a person's outward-facing credentials much of an indicator of their inner character, nor do I appreciate the many so-called mentors in my wide-ranging circles who promote their offerings in a look-at-me, all-about-me kind of way. Such an unattractive energy is not at all our guest today. While preparing for you, she and I were reflecting about a bunch of things, and I can't wait to have her on. I started my own contemplations about the legions of stories, especially with my aging but declining father, instances where I fortunately listened to my intuition, plus how merciful it was to have done so. The first one is a, an amusing but also instructive one, and it comes via my ebook, Coping with Uncopable Parents and Systems 10 Caregiver Survival Tips to Navigate the Elder Care Marathon, and it's available on Amazon. And this episode is called The Missing Glasses. So picture this. My dad was increasingly becoming frail and, you know, kind of forgetful. And so we had just finished a call maybe a few hours before this one. And then he calls back. He says, Carol Ann, my reading glasses have gone missing. I am sure somebody has come into the household to steal them. And I went, wow. Now, in my mind, 
I'm thinking, nope, that didn't happen. What happened is that you had, by that time, piles of boxes and papers and things kind of littered around the recreation room where you spent most of your time, Dad, and probably the glasses fell off of a chair or a pile or something like that in a place where you could not locate them, and that's why you thought that they were missing. But respectful, I kind of just said, okay, well, thank you for letting me know. Let's maybe both of us think about it for a while and we'll we'll retrace your steps together and, you know, maybe we'll be able to locate them by by working together on this on this mystery, shall we say. And so he went off happily to kind of look in various places. Wasn't long after that I got a call back, like a third call in a few hours. And he goes, guess what? They had fallen off of the couch where I sometimes read the newspapers. And uh, and so I said to myself, mm-hmm. so much as you thought some kind of reading varmint or something had stolen them. Nope, nope, not at all. They were right there all along. Now, the second of the two examples has far broader and more serious implications because it regards the topic of driving, for which, by the way, I have yet to entirely host a guest who can speak to the lethal nature of this subject, like once a parent has become a roadway hazard because uh, their skills are, are on the downslide, to say the least. I talked about this in my book, Coping with Uncopable Systems, Advocacy for Elder Care, and that one is the story of my father's non-driver's license renewal for the first time in over 70 years of driving expertise and mostly accident-free, except for some minor mishaps, Suddenly, the local agencies were not renewing his license at the age of 88 at the time. He had passed the gateways of 80, 82, 84, 86, but not with 88. He was telling me, as in trying to convince me, any of those out there who are parents, it's like your teenager who's trying to convince you about a fib. You know, and he was saying, oh, yeah, 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 I'm boning up on my rules of the road and I'm getting ready for my task. And I've got my cue cards right here. Well, the cue cards were real. However, I'm thinking he was just spending as much of that time as any watching hockey games and doing very little studying. And instead, uh, you know, just kind of thinking he could wing it. Well, he didn't. And he was denied. And he was in a Huff. What I thought was good that I trusted my intuition on was that he was not studying. And this was an indicator that I used behind the scenes, yeah, stealthily a little, to just do some investigations about what might have actually happened. My intuitive skills were not strong enough to figure it out totally, like as in piecing together a puzzle, but I figured out a lot about why he did not reobtain his license. All I know is that they did grant it by the end of that week when they gave him a retrial on the test. But still, my point is that as much as I went with my gut or however you'd like to term it in in your situation, I'm sure that there are some ways I did not listen to my inner wisdom and could have probably headed off at the pass sooner. Some brewing crises like this driving piece that I just referred to. And I know I ignored those hits for very deliberate reasons because I just did not want to become embroiled anew in awful family of origin memories a second time in my 54 years of life during the elder care marathon. Still, what I subsequently came to realize that now informs my mission is this. Whether you consciously or subconsciously choose to ignore that still small voice, you may come to regret it as a caregiver of aging parents, relatives, maybe even friends, neighbors, colleagues, or your own growing family. And regular audience members well realize I have drummed upon these points when it comes to completing essential paperwork, getting on top of their medical histories, etc. And I shall continue to do so. 
That's because you are going to find, if you did not already realize this, that intuition is your ally and our guest will soon attest. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging patients. Parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration, plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And as we get set to introduce our intriguing guest, here's something for you to contemplate. It's what she says. To what degree do you believe that intuition is a source of direction available to all of us? I believe it 100%. And by the way, anybody who's interested in calling in can reach us at 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And today we have with us... Lynn Robinson. Lynn is an author, speaker, and intuitive advisor, and her best-selling authorship makes her one of the nation's leading speakers as well on the hot topic of developing and trusting our intuition. Lynn teaches how to tap into the power of your inner GPS. Her intuitive reading clients consistently praise her uncanny insights as spot on. They report greater personal clarity and a deeper understanding of their purpose and calling. And I can tell you in preparing for today, she actually offered an intuitive insight that may help me in my business as well. And I thank her for that. Lynn has authored seven books on intuition that have been published in over 15 languages, and she has been very uh, humble in describing what all she does in the world. So I want to add just a few comments that her Gut Truster seminars have proven popular with businesses of all sizes. She's been featured in the Boston Globe, USA Today, and Chicago Tribune, and has been a guest on many national radio and TV programs, including ABC and Fox News. Lynn has been quoted in publications that include the New York Times, Investors Business Daily, Women's Day, Uh, Woman's Day, uh, Red Book, Ladies Home Journal, Self, and Good Housekeeping. And I could go on, but there is a lot that we want to cover today. So welcome to the Conscious Caregiver Show. Lynn, thank you for taking time out to be with us. Oh, thank you, Carol Ann. What a lovely introduction. I love your stories. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty good, <laughs> and I and I know that you have ones of your own, and so let's even just jump right in by having you tell us a little bit about how you came to be doing your work in the world, and that might include how you define 
intuition and where it comes from. Take it away, Lynn. Okay. Well, I guess the best place to start was, is a definition, so we're all kind of in the same place of what we're talking about. I mean, the dictionary calls intuition quick and ready insight. And as caregivers, we certainly need lots of that quick and ready part. <laughs> For I, sure. I think of it as, a, as an inner compass or an inner GPS. I've had to update because I find a lot of younger people don't know what compasses are, so we'll call it an inner GPS. But I think that we're all born with it, and it guides us. It helps us to make successful decisions in our life. It helps us with our life direction. It helps us you know, when we're trying to take care of ourselves as well as others, it gives us comfort. And it and it comes in lots of different ways. I mean, you mentioned several in your introduction. It might come as an inner voice, and it's often still and quiet, and I often wish that it would turn up the volume. <clears throat> it also comes as a gut feeling or just a general um, physical sensation. And often we get the information in dreams. So it's just a really wonderful resource. And I think in our very left brain cultures, we, we don't often listen to it. We, we think about logic and rationality, which certainly has its place, of course. But there's that often that guiding, you know, energy, that guiding wisdom that can tell us, you know, how to make the right next steps and how to help our, our loved ones and ourselves get through very difficult challenges in our lives. Mm -hmm. So, so much true, Lynn, and thank you for saying what you did about uh, over-orientation that we have in North America to the left brain, because Einstein himself, I think, said the problems of tomorrow cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that created them in the first place. And so if we don't bring in the other whole hemisphere for tomorrow's challenges, I think we're missing a big piece. And, you know, through our preparatory conversations, I know you've had some caregiving experiences of your own. So could you share a little bit with us about those? Yeah, yeah. My mom um, is still around, and she has Alzheimer's. And um, I think really what the the hardest part was was when my dad was still alive and trying to take care of her. And and you know, as most of you know, Alzheimer's doesn't sort of come on overnight. So it was more that sense that my dad was kind of trying to cover up for my mother, and there was something really going on. And my sister and I kept talking and going, you know, there's something wrong here. We couldn't quite figure out what it was, and. And so I think our intuition was really guiding us both with the initial diagnosis that my, both my parents were trying to deny, as well as really how do we approach the situation so we get them both the care that they need, you know, how, what's our role, how can we talk to the doctors. And it's one of the things that I tell caregivers or anybody to do is to ask your intuition questions. Not so much the disempowering question of, oh, what's wrong or, you know, why had this happened to me, but more, what can I do? You know, what's my role? What's going on? Um, the answers don't always come through right away, even for me. But when you ask the empowering questions of, you know, how can I best take care of my loved one or how can I best take care of myself in this process, the answers will start coming in unusual ways. You know, again, the still quiet inner voice and the gut feeling, the aha moments, the dreams. But often intuition will lead you to the right magazine article that gives you some answers. Or you might hear a podcast like this with you, Carol Ann, that gives you an answer. It's like you're being guided to turn the radio on or listen to the podcast or go pick up that magazine or have a conversation with a friend who might know the answer. So intuition guides us in so many different ways. And I know that it did for my sister and I, you know, through my my mother's illness, um, which she continues to this day, and, and, you know, through my dad's dying. Of how mm. to, how can we help him? You know, how can we help each other, my sister and I, and and you know, how can we keep our lives as centered as possible while going through this difficult transition with my folks? It's a very challenging one, Lynn, and Alzheimer's is is one that's you know growing, growing. It seems by the yeah. day and by the by the minute. And so, indeed, although we're speaking in a caregiving context, what you're really imparting today are life skills too. And I love your way of uh, suggesting empowering rather than disempowering questions. As early as we are into our broadcast, I'm encouraging our listeners right now to consider if there are even any beliefs about intuition and or how this this powerful access point can pertain to your life that Lynn Robinson has already either, you know, confirmed or dispelled possibly. I know 
that is already the case for me in both instances. While we were preparing, it's not like I knew everything that you were going to share with us today. And so my mind is is being opened up too. And I know we have lots of ideas that we want to talk about after a break about quieting our minds enough to hear and learning how to trust our intuition more fully. Check out, by the way, her latest book, which is called Put Your Intuition to Work, How to Supercharge Your Inner Wisdom to Think Fast and Make Great Decisions. So hope you're really starting to get something that you're going to be able to take away into your own life as a result of this broadcast. Reminder that we accept call-ins at 1-866-451-1451. And uh, you are currently listening to The Conscious Caregiver Show. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So glad that you've set aside time to be with us today, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, along with iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're sharing precious wisdom today with author Lynn Robinson, and her latest book is called Put Your Intuition to Work, How to Supercharge Your Inner Wisdom to Think Fast and Make Great Decisions. And she's already been defining intuition, where it comes from with us, and talking about her own caregiving experiences, which go on today, dealing with her sister with a mom who has Alzheimer's. So she knows of which we are speaking. And you know, kind of to do with caregiving and intuition in general. I wonder, Lynn, how people can quiet their minds enough to hear why this is important to do so, because we both know that caregivers rarely sit still long enough to tune into that small voice or whatever access point they use. So how can we get ourselves to be more quiet to listen. I know. That's the tricky part, isn't it? I know I do intuitive uh, readings for a lot of busy people, executives, as well as folks like us who are who are caregivers or in transition in our lives. And everybody just says, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so busy. You know, how can I learn to trust this? And, you know, I'm not of the opinion that one needs to spend an hour in meditation every day or even <laughs> necessarily 10 minutes, although I think it helps. But, you know, often intuition is just really a thought away. And it partly is, you know, it, it could even just be, you know, have, just sitting down for 30 seconds and going, what do I need to do right now? Or what do I need to know right now? Because when we're in that busy, oh, my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. What am I going to do? Everything is falling apart around me. What, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? I'm sure we're all too way familiar with that conversation. But when you just sit down, I like to put my hand over my heart because I feel like that calms me down. And, I, you know, those empowering questions again, you know, what, what could I do to feel better? What could I do to help take care of my loved one today? What am I grateful for? I mean, just as I'm even asking those questions, I find myself even feeling calmer. And the, you know, the answers may come in as, oh, you know, that would be a good idea. You know, let me go make myself a cup of tea or let me try this approach with my loved one. You know, or again, it may just come in, in many other forms, but the, your, your questions are always answered by intuition, by your inner guidance. And that's why I like those empowering questions rather than, you know, what's wrong or will this crisis 
this ever be over? Or, you know, why can't I get my, you know, brother, sister, daughter, son to help? Or, you know, whatever those awful questions are. But more, how can I approach this? How can I bring peace into my life? How can I, how can I get through this with a degree of calm? I mean, those are the empowering questions. And just simply taking 30 seconds and taking a few deep breaths and centering yourself often is enough to really align yourself with, it, with, the, with that energy of intuition so that you start getting the answers. Mm-hmm. And so much important, and you're, you're really emphasizing with us just even taking a short amount of time, because I know caregivers don't believe that they have any oh. time in the day at all. And so mm-hmm. simple as breathing sounds. It is so powerful. And just getting ourselves to a place where we can hear and tune in. I love your how can I questions as well, Lynn, because any question that starts with how can I strikes me as empowering unto itself. So, you know, we're, we're going to start talking about how to, in, you know, trust our intuition more fully because there are times when people hear it, but then they ignore it only to regret that decision later. And again, we all know how much caregivers need to make quick decisions often that can be difficult. So how do we develop that trust now? Yeah, I think that intuition is like any skill, that the more we use it, the better we get at it. And so I tell people to try to trust it in small, low-risk situations at first to kind of build that intuitive muscle, if you will. So it might be, you know, as simple as, you know, what kind of foods would make me feel better today or what kind of activities would make me feel better. And then just trusting that and seeing what happens as you take the advice of your own inner guidance and take action on it. Um, And then it can go to big things. You know, what can I do to to take care of myself after my loved one passes? Or, you know, how could I create more of what I need in my life? Um, Or when you've got that, you know, that felt sense that something is off with the diagnosis or the medication, I mean, obviously, you know, still have to consult with your healthcare practitioners, but really paying attention to what's going on here and how can I make my life better and taking small steps towards it. I mean, sometimes, you know, the answers come back and it's, you know, it's a big thing like leave my job or begin or end a relationship. But I think that often the, one of the ways to pay attention to the intuition is start taking small steps towards what you, know, what you need to do um, and what you're hearing that will bring comfort to you. And I will tell you also one of the reasons that people don't trust their intuition is because it often leads them out of their comfort zone. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we get very stuck in life, you know, whether caregivers or not. I know that makes up the bulk of my intuitive reading business when people feel like they're stuck. But And so they're, I think often they're aware of what their intuition is telling them, but they're scared. You know, it means making a change and that our minds get so full of, oh, my gosh, what if it doesn't work out? What if I, you know, what if I don't like it? What if I won't make money? What if I don't find love again? You know, we have all those disempowering questions again. But it's like taking some small steps based on what your intuition is guiding you towards and seeing how it works out and in most cases I certainly find in my own life things do get better and either you know my my mental health might be improving in the way that my intuition is indicating or my physical health or my with my caregiving for my loved one by taking those small next steps Mm -mm. small steps right again what can we do in our busy and cramped lives, it's actually going to make a difference. And it it all seems to come down to tuning into ourselves, which is why you started, Lynn, with the, you know, the right brain and and going by different forms of intelligence. Perhaps you are the you're the expert here, so I may or may not be using the absolutely correct language, but I think you're showing us how to really get within ourselves to quiet enough to be able to trust more fully and folks who are listening I sure hope that you are starting to make some very clear connections for yourself based on what Lynn has been sharing with us because uh, we are in fact going to in our next segment talk about exactly what you do with your clients Lynn which is you know what to do when they're stuck in a rut or overwhelmed and I think worry can describe the caregiver's life as well. I'm reminding everybody that we appreciate Collins at 1-866-451-1451. 
one 451 1451. And right now, I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. We're going to pause from the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Thanks so much for the privilege of including us in your day because it is always inspiring to have you with us. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, to in radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes, and we're connecting today with author, speaker, and intuitive advisor Lynn Robinson about how to be an intuitive caregiver. By the way, please make sure to check out just one of her many wonderful books on the subject titled Divine Intuition, Our Inner Guide to Purpose, Peace, and Prosperity. And Lynn, you've been so wonderful about sharing with us all kinds of you know, easy, simple, not overwhelming tips that we can use as caregivers in lives that often feel, you know, overburdened. So things that we can really do to make a difference. And I know that people often call you when they're stuck in a rut or overwhelmed in some way. And I believe that you have a daily technique that can get them going in the right direction again. What, what would that be? Yeah, it's a three-step technique, and I I do find it's very simple yet very powerful. And I'm a big fan of of law of attraction. I mean, to over very much oversimplify what that is, it's like what you focus on, you attract into your life. So step one is really just simply to think about what you want your life to look like. I mean, and it could doesn't have to be. You know, specific, you know, want a Mercedes in my driveway or something, but it can be simple. It can be intangibles. You know, I want my, I want a life that's peaceful or calm or that has adventure or more community or more love. And so I suggest people write that down in a journal. There's something very powerful about writing it down. And I also like creating vision boards, um, which are basically cutting out pictures and words from magazines or from the internet of what you want, a visual represent, representation of what you want your li- life to look and feel like. So that's step one. And what I do, and I usually do it in the morning, um, I, I just meditate for a few minutes. And I, I imagine the life that I want, you know, that my loved ones are cared for, that I feel fulfilled filled and happy, that I'm surrounded by love and, and I feel healthy and, you know, well 
well-being. So I just imagine those things. I think visualization, I mean, we hear Olympic athletes doing it, successful business people doing it. I think there's a huge power in that. And to, to go to the kind of that inner GPS, the way I think of intuition, it's like when you're doing these visualizations and you're creating a vision board and writing in your journal what you want to happen, it's like you're saying to that, you're programming the GPS, like this is where I want to go. And then your intuition will start giving you clues about what steps to take, you know, what things to do. But the final um, take step in this technique, the third, third step, is before I end my visualization, is I put my hand over my heart because I think it gets me out of my logical brain, and I just say, what could I do today to move in this new direction? And I just wait, and I try to just feel the answer. Now, intuition comes to us if something feels draining, boring, enervating. That's your intuition saying, don't go there or try to move away from it. If, you're, if the answer is something that makes you feel hopeful or at peace or curious or like, oh, yes, that would be interesting, that's your answer. So that's one of the ways that intuition comes to us. So you could simply ask the question, you know, what one thing could I do today to feel better or to feel more at peace? And just you know, pay attention to the answer that you get. So that whole technique, I mean, the first part might take, a, you know, maybe half an hour or so, but steps two and three you can do within just a couple minutes every day. Mm-hmm. It's very powerful. It's very powerful, and I love your notion to really focus on our feelings as well. Yeah. That's something that people are not always so good at. They try to go to the head rather than the heart, yeah. and yet in right. our feelings, we're constantly guiding ourselves. And so given how caregivers so often feel overwhelmed, right, how can we start to find different ways of feeling and attract that into our lives as well? Right. And on the same notion, you know, a lot of caregivers find themselves worried about a bunch of things, right? They have plenty of those daily. Uh So I think you write about that too in terms of some tips to overcome worry. So what can you suggest that's helpful in that context, Lynn? Yeah. I wrote a book a few years ago called Listen, Trusting Your Inner Voice in Times of Crisis, which probably would be, I hadn't thought about mentioning that one to you, but that would probably be perfect for our caregiver audience. And one, I interviewed a lot of people who had had a, you know, an upsetting life experience, caregivers as well as lots of other things. And, and almost to a person, they, they told me that they had a phrase that they used. Um, and I think it's very individual, so it's hard to kind of just say, oh, here's the one to use and this one works. But the one that I heard most commonly is this too shall pass. Um, and so it's a, because I think a lot of times we have, I don't know if we want to call them negative affirmations. Is there such a thing? You know, oh, my gosh, when will this end? You know, when will this be over? I'm so stressed. You know, we say things to ourselves like that. But choosing a, a, a phrase that feels hopeful, you know, I'm strong. I know I can get through this. Um, you know, being and also the, I would say other than a phrase is really focusing on what you're grateful for each day. Because let's face it, I mean, it can, you know, life can be be very overwhelming when you're a caregiver and probably, you know, the predominant um, thought is more towards things that are going wrong. But there's always that little glimmer of something that happened during the day that you're grateful for. You know, a neighbor dropped off some soup or your loved one woke up in a good mood or, you know, your kids dropped by or, you know, you just noticed the flowers outside your window. I mean, just to really focus on and keep your focus there. That helps a lot. And I would say the third um, suggestion I have is trying to stay in the present moment as much as possible because I, I, I definitely come from a long line of worriers, not warriors, but warriors. <laughs> and I notice that when I do it, um, it's all about the future. What if this happens? What if that happens? And I find that I make my present moment, you know, sometimes very overwhelming just by the nature of my own thinking. So I really have learned to kind of when I start feeling like I'm getting very worried or overwhelmed, is really stopping and saying, Lynn, you know, what are you saying? to yourself right now and what do you want instead well I you know and so I will just kind of reaffirm you know I want my life to feel you know fill in the blank peaceful or you know that I've got loved ones around me that I'm cared for and supported and so it's like really trying to break that habit of you know the chicken little kind of like oh my gosh this bad thing is going to happen um (laughs) It, you know, it's hard I, it, because I think our minds just want to go there. But I've certainly found that when I can wrestle my brain from, you know, awfulizing the future, I have a lot more peace and calm in my life. 
It's so very true. I I laugh along with you. Yes, I'm sure that we can ancestrally go back by a bunch of generations. I sure can where the habit of worry was early on instilled. And I can also say it was not helpful <laughs> for most of those years. Yeah. Funny, you know, funny. And Oh, go ahead, Lynn, please. It, yeah. I was just, I'm sorry, I was talking over you, but I'm just saying, I, what occurs to me as you're saying that is it, so, it sort of gives us a modicum of control. I think it's an illusion if we're worrying about the future, like, what if this happens? I'll do this, you know, but I think it really disempowers us. <laughs> It does that a lot, and it's funny how you mentioned just a few moments ago your book, Listen, Trusting Your Inner Voice in Times of Crisis. That was what I was going to come back to remind people about, because caregiving can be one of the most crisis-oriented times of life. And so I hope everybody is really paying attention to what you're going to implement today, not the least of which is also gratitude. So, you know, Lynn, thank you for for mentioning such such wonderful ideas and suggestions that don't have to take a lot of time out of our days. So I'm reminding everybody that I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We are on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes and so I hope you're gaining as much as I personally am from author, speaker and intuitive advisor Lynn Robinson because she is sharing with us some great ideas for how to be an intuitive caregiver. So remember to check out her box because she has many that have been translated into a bunch of languages. So stand by everyone and we'll be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles or Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. You know, always it brings such fulfillment to know that you make a point of being a prized member of our audience. And this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and we're chatting today with author, speaker, and intuitive advisor, Lynn Robinson. And, you know... I hope you're starting to really see why I wanted her on today, because on her resource-rich website as well, it's stated that audiences love her energy, enthusiasm, depth of content, and sense of humor. And I would say that she is most assuredly bringing us all of those qualities and more, as we learn today for the intuitive uh, caregiver, shall we say, how to get out of ruts, overwhelm, 
worry, and a bunch of other states that probably don't do us too much good at the end of, of the day. So, Lynn, we're coming down the home stretch with you already, goodness. So there may be some awareness or knowledge that you wish to impart with our valued listeners that we haven't gotten to yet. So what else do you want to make sure to convey today? You know, I think it's in part really to just pay attention to that intuition. And and it may be even asking the question, what does my intuition have to say about this issue that I'm dealing with? You know, whether it's your loved one's medical care or your sense of overwhelm. But just to, you know, to start, it's part of how to build that intuitive muscle is just to check in with it frequently and pay attention to the information that you're getting. Um, So I think that's probably one of the key ones. And as you mentioned, I've had my website for a long time, so there's a lot of resources on it, from quizzes to videos about how to listen to your intuition, and you mentioned the intuition newsletter, as well as the books and my intuitive readings, so there's a lot of information there. I'm a big fan of how to, because I think so often we tell people to, oh, trust your gut, and people don't know how to do that, so I really like, you know, giving people the practical information, so lots of tools and resources in my book and on my free resources on my on my website, because I think this is a, a, a gift that we all have that when we tap into it, you know, it's a, some people think of it as a spiritual, you know, a divine intuition of, you know, that we're all being guided, you know, whether you have a specific religious, you know, persuasion or not, I don't think that it really matters, but to me, it's a divine, um, loving consciousness that is part of us, that wants us to do well, that wants us to be safe and healthy and successful and loved, and so it's always, that's our default position and it's always guiding us to be back on track. So, so listening to it, even amidst all of life's uncertainties and difficulties, it's always there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's available to us. And that's why we posed at the outset today, you know, do you actually feel like you have access to, to this kind of inner connection, to this greater connection. And because many people think that they don't, sometimes they believe, I think one of the myths in your field must be that they believe, well, that, no, that's only available to others, but I don't have that capability myself. Wow. And what I think we're dispelling a lot of that today. And why I mentioned your website, it was not just because I was browsing there further to prepare, but also it is very true. You give of yourself generously, Lynn. And that is a very key criterion for me as the host of this show, that people are there to serve, not just to, you know, be, I guess I'd call it blatantly self-promoting for lack of a better term. <laughs> so, you know, let's let's talk for a moment about how people can find out more about you. Name your website. Tell us any other access points like, you know, social media or otherwise. Please make sure that we know that information. Yeah. Well, my website is lynnrobinson.com. And it's my first name is L-Y-N-N, no E, so LynnRobinson.com. And that's probably the best place to reach me, and all of my social media icons are there, so you can connect with me on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and all those other good things. So, I, again, you know, on, on all those media, I keep trying to put out information about how to listen to one's intuition. But there's resources there that are my books, my quizzes, my intuitive reading information, but lots of free resources, too. So I love to share this information because, like you just said, Carolyn, I I do believe it's a gift that we all have. You know, I think if we don't pay attention to it, the the skill kind of diminishes a little bit, and so we have to take action and listen and and um, do what our intuition is saying. That's the way to you know to get a better grade with intuition is to listen to it and act on it. But I do think it's a resource that's available to all of us that helps guide our lives. Mm -hmm. So, so very important. And Lynn, just I I got it, but I just want the listeners in case they want to jot it down. I know people listen who have a piece of paper next to them when they do. What was your website again, please? It's called LynnRobinson.com. Okay, and Lynn without an E. Without an E, yes. Yes, and uh, yeah, yeah, those quizzes looked very intriguing to me the other day. People love quizzes, so, you know. I know, I just started (laughs) revamping those. They're fun. We were really... People are downloading those like crazy. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. And, you know, on that point, as your extended bio 
from which I pulled earlier today states that you made the time to really write seven books in the midst of your busy consulting practice. Isn't <laughs> isn't that incredible? And no, so every time you know, somebody says that, I go, I can't believe I did that. Oh my god, you gosh, did that's that. So I sense. I know. As as authors, both of us, we realize what a what an accomplishment that is. And really, it's the same thing for your guest spot on the Conscious Caregiver today, then, because you know somebody who schedule is as full up as yours and I just need to look at your speaking calendar to validate that one has really a lot of options on where you devote your precious resources and I'd say that that's why it was such an honor and delight to receive your affirmative answer to to join us because here's something that listeners would not know but I do, and I'm just going to mention it because it's important. You're right now in the midst of selling a property and thus carry yourself way more than a crammed plate. I mean, it was just yeah, three years ago terrible. around this time that my husband and I were selling a house that was more than half the size of where we now reside. And so I understand how profoundly stressful that can be, too. And I think that's all the more reason to extend my great gratitude for you being on and also certainly wish you great success with that endeavor, along with your upcoming pursuits. So, Lynn, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being on with us today. Thank you so much, Carolyn. You're a great interviewer. <laughs> well, you made the job easy. Uh, as Thanks. we were planning with your graciousness. And so I just encourage people to really take you up on the offer with your website and go explore uh, all of those resource-rich places, as well as maybe even do an intuitive reading with you. Wow, on the heels of this <laughs> show, you might be hearing from me too. How would that be? <laughs> okay. so, so anyway, for now, we're, we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, along with iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show, and I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Thanks again, Lynn. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and tune in radio. Welcome back, everyone, to what always becomes a bit of a compressed but important last few moments with one another. And we're on the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, iHeart Radio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is, of course, the Conscious Caregiver Show. So, this is the place where we preview next week and we remind you of some resources that are available to you that we encourage you to access. So, let's at least give a preview of the ready-to-go theme we have on tap for next week, and we're calling it the Emotionally Intelligent 
caregiver. And boy, isn't that a set of qualities desperately needed, particularly when you're dealing with what I always call an uncopable parent, a difficult one. Oh, my goodness. And I have been so reviled, folks, in various settings for emphasizing that it's our attitudes and our mindsets, more so than even our skills, that are going to get us through what will otherwise be a grueling chapter of life. So I personally can't wait to hear and learn more about an area I've long been interested in on emotional intelligence. I know Harvey from a mastermind in which we have studied, and he modestly bills himself as the EI guy, which I just love because actually he's a wealth of expertise and he greatly looks forward to sharing all of it. Now, in the meantime, you might like to check out my latest blog and I call it Listening Over Ice Cream. It was inspired by examples that are going on in conversations with folks in my life who have caregiving roles and responsibilities. And the basic tone is to listen as much for what is not being said as what is being said. You can find that blog at my website, copingwithuncopableparents.com. That's copingwithuncopableparents.com. And last week, a cherished regular listener said she loved hearing about the speaking arenas in which I deliver talks for various audiences. So here's a bit of a set of titles that might intrigue you to go farther and actually book me. And for assisted living retirement facilities, I've got one coming together as a care provider team for those who work in those environments, for burnt out caregivers. There's one of my favorites is when the terrible twos become the entitled 80s for organizations. Uh, I have one called Getting Ahead of the Elder Care Crisis, Five Must Do's to Be an Employer of Choice. And at aging conferences, I would help people navigate the maze of elder care through an innovative advocacy model. That's just a few of many titles. And to book me, you can either go to my contact form or send me an email at Carolann Hamilton, Carolann at CarolannHamilton.com. I do look forward to being of service. BoldBraveMedia.com carries the archives for the conscious caregiver. So there's lots that you can research well and beyond today on speaking, coaching, you name it. We're here to serve you. And as always, uh, you know, I like to say with you and recognize this, that you have been strong for too long. How about you consider daring to care with flair? That's what my guests and I are really trying to help you with, whether that may be on using your intuition, and Lynn helped us a lot there, accessing emotional intelligence skills. We've caught coming Later in the month, a topic on the power of story or helping your elders to share their story, as well as the story that was so potent last week from our guests. So either way, we're always here to make a difference in your life. And I look forward to helping you on a continued basis. In any case, we're on the BBM Global Network TuneIn Radio, along with iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is The Conscious Caregiver Show. See you next week, folks. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.